Hello, Alex here, and in this video I want to share with you some of the things that I learned when I tried developing C41 color negative film at home for the first time last year. Let's get into it. For the year of 2022, one of my personal goals that I set myself was to develop C41 color negative film at home. So I purchased a 1 litre Rolli Color Chem C41 kit and I didn't purchase a 5 litre kit because even though it's only twice the price for 5 times as much stuff, that kit does 60 to 80 rolls and that is a huge amount of stuff to commit to actually shooting and developing within the lifetime of the chemicals themselves. Also, it was my first time doing it and I didn't want to risk wasting the entire kit, so I went with the 1 litre kit. In this video, I'm assuming that you're familiar with the general process of black and white negative film development and you've probably done it at home already and you're thinking about branching out into doing colour negative film at home, either for control reasons or for cost reasons. This isn't about how to develop colour negative film at home, just some of the things that I picked up or my thoughts on the process now that I've gone through it and I'm just sharing that with people who haven't done it for the first time themselves. It really, really isn't. The main thing you're going to hear online or read online is that it's a very temperature sensitive process and you need very fine temperature control. Compared to black and white film, you do, but it's not that severe. Your tolerance is realistically probably one and a half to two degrees Celsius either, either way. Um, if you go three degrees or more, you're probably going to run into problems. But if you're doing basic temperature control, a big bucket of hot water, sous vide, I have a jobo with a heated water tank, that kind of thing, it's going to be okay. In my opinion, the main time that you're really going to need precise temperature control is if you're, say, a wedding photographer or someone else where you have a large project where you're shooting a lot of the same film and you need it, not just want it, you need it to look exactly the same. If you shoot, say, a dozen rolls of Portra 400, memes aside, at a wedding, you don't want to have to go and make a million Lightroom presets or just batch process things with slightly different tweaks to the HSL just to make sure that each of these rolls lines up. If your scanning process is consistent, then the having consistent temperature control will enhance the consistency of these things roll to roll. But for me, shooting six different rolls of six different things, it doesn't matter. I did a couple of runs where I was at 37 and a half degrees, a couple where I was at nearly 40 degrees. They're fine. But if I were to do the same film at those two temperatures, say I did a side by side test, there probably would be a noticeable difference and there probably would be a bit of extra work required in post to get them looking the same. And that's where the really critical temperature control comes in. For normal home development, for casual people with a few roles, especially of different things that aren't being used for the same purpose, it's fine. I had never seen wet color negative film before doing all of this, so when I pulled my roll of Lomachrome purple out of the tank, it looked kind of milky, almost as if the Blix had started to die, even though it was only two weeks after I had actually prepared the working solutions and I had stored them well in the dark and cold, protected from oxygen, I had no idea what was going on. And I did, I don't say panic, but I did go to my friends on Discord and ask them what the hell was going on. Sure enough, it's just because the film was wet and it turns out certain colour negative films do look a bit weird, almost like what you would expect from an underfixed black and white negative when they're wet and that clears up when they dry. When I was researching which kit to actually go and buy in the end, Tetanol, Rolli, etc., there's a pretty clear divide between people who insist that literally every single kit is literally exactly the same and people who say, who say it doesn't really matter. They're kind of both right. The developer, CD4, Color Developing Agent 4, is the part of, it's a described part of the C41 process. If it's not CD4, it's not a C41 kit. So the developer should be functionally or potentially literally identical in all cases. Where the difference comes in is the bleach and fix. Short version, you can have a two bath C41 kit where you have developer and then Blix, which is bleach and fixer combined, or a three bath kit, developer, bleach, and then fix. 
Basically, Blix doesn't last as long and it's a lot less convenient in that your times get very, very long very quickly, as in your actual Blix time can go from a few minutes up to 15 or 20 minutes as they become exhausted. With a separate bleach and fix, your times are gonna be much shorter, probably in the eight to 10 minute kind of region, and they'll probably stay closer to that as the kit becomes exhausted. So if you're into more like process control, a three bath kit might be preferable. Um, realistically, it doesn't matter, probably. But um, the point is, the difference between the kits is functionally very small and it's down to personal preference and it doesn't actually matter where you buy your kit and who makes it. I wore basic nitrile gloves while I was doing all of this and that turned out to be a good thing. It did protect me from a couple of spills and spits with the tank, particularly with the Blix. And I wore my gardening jeans, which did get splashed with a bit of Blix here and there and they did develop holes after I put them through a hot wash. So protect yourself, protect your skin and don't wear clothes that you actually care about. Let's say that you find after a bit of experience and trial and error that your favorite color negative stock gives negatives that are just a little bit thin with normal development. You can push them by a fraction of a stop, give it an extra 10 or 15 seconds of development and just give it a bit extra density without needing to overexpose it when you're shooting. Like say maybe you can't and you actually need to work in available light. I'm not talking about full pushing and pulling, which is a whole other ball game and gives you way more control and a lot of labs don't even offer pulling. Most don't. And a good few don't offer pushing or will charge you quite a bit extra for it, potentially. There are some that will do free pushing one to two stops, but that's beside the point. Most labs don't do that. Doing this at home, you get a lot of control. If you find a certain film that you like to develop or shoot a certain way, you can really dial in the process to suit your own personal taste. And that level of control, as I said, is invaluable. The one liter Rolex Color Chem Kit cost me 35 euros and it's rated for 12 to 16 rolls without pushing. I put 14 rolls through it before I called it quits because I didn't shoot enough film to justify another dev run before the kit was very, very old and I wasn't willing to risk it at that stage. So I just put it aside. 14 rolls for 35 euros, pretty much exactly two euros 50 per roll. It is two euros 50 per roll, which is a lot cheaper than local labs, which range from 350 to five euro per roll. And they can do it at home. I don't have to worry about either cycling in inclement weather because it's Ireland or bus fares going in and out of the city. It's a lot more convenient and it saves money. A five liter kit, like I said, gives you five times as much stuff for about twice the price, about 70 euros. Even ignoring the, can you shoot 60 to 80 rolls worth before the kit dies angle, the one liter kit still isn't bad value. There are some people who would make out that a one liter kit makes you a bad person somehow. Like there might be a bit of hyperbole going on there, but there is a definite bias against smaller kits. But if people weren't buying them, they wouldn't still be made. There's definitely a strong argument to be made that you're getting a small saving and convenience and control, and it doesn't all just have to be about the money. It doesn't make a difference if it's not the most economical kit you can possibly get, and it's not going to be. But yeah, the one liter kits, they're pretty good. I think they have a bit of a bad rap online from what I've seen. This point is sort of a bonus, and it doesn't apply to the vast majority of people, which is why I've left it last. When I took my large format color negative film, or cross-processed expired Velvia out of the tank, the magic wasn't there. There's something magical about seeing that four by five inch slide on a light table, up against the light, whatever, just it's magic, right? Slide film in general is magical, but especially in a big sheet size. And that magic isn't there with color negatives. When I took those out of the tank and I saw them and it didn't hit me the same way, I realized that's why E6 sheet film is so much cheaper relative to color negative film in sheet film format than it is in 120 and 35 mil roll film formats. People want that magic, so they buy more slide film, production goes up, economies of scale, next thing you know, ectochrome is actually cheaper than Portra in 4x5.
It's a small thing, it's just something I'd never thought about before. And yeah, E6 sheet film pricing suddenly makes sense. So nothing in this video is particularly groundbreaking, and it's just a couple of things that I've observed or realized after the fact that I think might prove useful to somebody who's on YouTube looking up home C41 development and just kind of a bit nervous about the whole thing. It'll be fine. You're probably not gonna screw it up. Don't worry about it too much. That's all I have to say for this video, so stay safe and bye-bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at chaka1277 for new pictures every day. If you like this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.